Hi, I'm Mrs. Jardine, and we are going to talk about phylum nematoda today, which are the roundworms. I thought if I put it on a beautiful background, it might not make it sound so gross. Uh, roundworm characteristics, they're slender and they're tapered at both sides. So unlike a pencil, like this side of the pencil, can you see that? That's not tapered, this is. So both sides look like that. They both look tapered. Uh, they can be microscopic um, to like one millimeter or to like a whole meter length, which is like three feet. Most of them are free living. Uh, the habitat is like soil, salt flats, and the parasitic ones live in almost all plant, plants and animals. So what type of body plan do they have? They have they are pseudocoelomates. They're the only phylum that we talked about that are the only phylum that is pseudocoelomate, which means they have a false body cavity. So it's only partially lined with mesoderm. They have three germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm, but the body cavity isn't fully lined, so it's called a pseudocoelomate. Uh, they eat, some are carnivores, so they eat small animals. Others eat dead decaying organic matter, algae, or fungus. So here's the pharynx. This is where the food would go in. And, ah, oh, they have a one-way digestive tract. That is the first animal that we talk about with a one-way digestive tract. Look at that. Boom. Super exciting. So they have a separate mouth and anus. It's not the same thing. Yay for roundworms. They exchange gases and excrete metabolic waste through their body walls through diffusion still. They don't have an internal transport system. They don't have a circulatory system. They don't have anything like that. They just use diffusion. And if you remember, I've said this several times if you watched all my videos, diffusion is the movement of molecules from high concentration to low concentration. So if this is where all the oxygen is. See how that? There's no oxygen in the roundworm. It will diffuse into the roundworm. Boom. High. High. Ooh, doesn't require any any energy so anything that they want to get in like that um oxygen into the roundworm carbon dioxide out of the roundworm so it'll happen through diffusion we do have a, several ganglia if you remember ganglia are concentrated on uh, nerve cells in one area so it would be like their brain but it's not a brain so it's very simple they transmit sensory information and control movement they can detect chemicals given off by prey or by host so that they know to avoid it if possible. Here's one, a roundworm that is one millimeter. See, it has a mouth. They call it the pharynx. You have a pharynx. It's right here. It's your throat. Ooh, hear that? That's my pharynx swallowing. Um, so they have a pharynx, and then they have an anus. Super helpful. One-way digestive tract. And then notice there they have eggs and sperm. Or actually, no, this one just has eggs. The muscles extend the length of the body, and with the pseudocelum, it acts as a hydrostatic skeleton. Hydro means water, um, static skeleton. It kind of goes the whole way and helps it to move. Aquatic roundworms use those to move like snakes, and soil ones thrash. They have separate male, male and female um, sexes. They actually have internal fertilization. What? Yeah, that's kind of crazy. The parasitic roundworms, like hookworms, have complex life cycles that involve two or three hosts. Um, uh, ones that are not parasitic have male and females. Uh, trichinosis is basically it's worms that burrow in the intestine wall. The larvae travel through the bloodstream, burrow in the organs and tissues, then they're transport point, transported by eating muscle or meat that's infected, like in humans or in humans. In the United States, they test everything so that what you buy at the store will not have any of this stuff in there. But if you shoot your own deer or something like that and you eat it, there could be a chance that it's on there, so you have to be careful. Filarial worms, those are transmit, um, that is a type of roundworm that is transmitted through um, biting insects. It's, co uh, it's common in tropical regions of Asia and it causes elephantitis. This is a very extreme case of elephantitis, or sorry, elephantiasis. Sorry. I, I'm, yeah. Um, it's, this one's transported through insect bites, and this one is in uh, infected meat. So they don't all. Not all roundworms are parasitic through the same means. This is a bad roundworm because a good roundworm doesn't kill its host. This one did uh, because it overpopulated and then the host died of starvation because the food can't get through. A good parasite does not kill its host because then what happens to the parasite? It dies too. So a good parasite doesn't kill its host. Scarus is the worm that causes malnutrition. It's spread by eating vegetables, not washed properly. It was very common um, like 100 years ago because people, everybody had a garden. And then if you just ate the food out of the garden, you could get it that way. Um, so they had to teach, um, they educated the schools 
uh, this video here that, he, no, the video on the last slide, it's like literally from like 1960. It's awesome. I mean, it's horrible, but it's awesome because it shows how they educated them and what they're, I mean, it's all in black and white. It's great. I don't even know if it's on the internet anymore. Um, it was last year though. But it shows that they get it from the soil. Like kids were playing in the soil with their hands and their feet, you no know, shoes and socks on, and then they're like eating. And so that's how they got it. Hookworms enter the body from their feet. So if you have a cut in your foot and you're running around on the farm, it can go in and burrow that way. It can cause weakness and poor growth. Super fun and not gross at all. So if you, that something that would be helpful that we're going to do in the class is you make a Venn diagram. So you make a circle. You guys all know what a Venn diagram is. And you compare flatworms to roundworms. Boom. So here's the flatworms, characteristics of that, that are only characteristics of flatworms. Roundworms, characteristics of only those. And then both. That'll help you to review them here. Let me know if you have questions. Bye.